Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is my micro air hockey table. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I built my micro air hockey table for under 20 bucks. And not only is this table fully functional and super fun to play, but it's also just a really cool thing to have sitting around your house, because who else has a micro air hockey table? But enough talk, without any further ado, let's get started on how to build it. Here I have a standard 8x10 inch sheet of acrylic plastic that's going to serve as the top for our air hockey table. Lucky for us, this is already a pretty good shape for our air hockey table, so we're actually not going to have to cut it down at all. All we have to do is build the frame around it. I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch pine plywood to construct the whole frame, but of course you can use whatever wood you like. I just like how the plywood looks once it's stained. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my plywood and cut out two 2.5 by 8 inch long pieces. <coughs> then cut out two inch and three quarters by eight inch long pieces. I'm then going to take the two smaller pieces and cut out a three and a half inch channel out of the center top of both of them, making one channel a quarter inch deep, but the other three quarters. Just like this. Now we're going to want to glue and nail down each smaller piece onto the end of a larger piece, channel facing down. Next, we can connect both pieces, then glue and nail them together as well. Absolutely beautiful. And in case you haven't already figured it out, this is actually what is going to collect the pucks. The pucks will slide in this hole, and then you can reach in and grab them through this one. But since air hockey is a two-person game, we're going to need to build one more of these. So let's go ahead and repeat the process. With both goals cut out, it is now time to cut out the sides of the table. The sides will of course have to be 2.5 inches tall because that's how tall the goals are, and 16.5 inches long because that's how long the goals and the 10 inch space we need for the plexiglasses. I'm now going to drill 10 quarter inch holes on the one end of each side board, then place one quarter inch dowel into each side. This way whenever someone makes a point, all you have to do is move the peg up one slot and it'll help you keep score. With that complete, we can now go ahead and glue and nail all four of our frame pieces together. Awesome, with that done, I'm now going to take some super thin 3 quarter inch wide strips of wood and secure them to the inside walls of the frame, making sure to mount them at about the same height as the bottom of the puck hole, which is about a half inch from the bottom of the whole table. This inside trim will not only hold up the plexiglass, but also help support the fan that we're going to mount underneath later. Next, I'm going to fill all the exterior nail holes with wood putty, give everything a solid sanding, then take some wood stain, I'm using Jacobean, and stain it. While we give that some time to dry, we can temporarily switch our tension back to the plexiglass. What we're going to want to do is first take about a 1 16th drill bit and drill holes all the way through the sheet about a half inch apart. I find it easiest to draw a grid first. Just like this. I'm then going to take some poster board and cut out a section just large enough to fit underneath our plexiglass, then draw a few goals on it. Once we have that done, we can go ahead and tape it onto the bottom of the glass. Repoke the holes, and then drop the whole thing into the frame, making sure to hot glue it in place. Okay, so after gluing this down, I've noticed that there's a little bit of a flex towards the center of the table. I thought the glass was small enough to where we wouldn't have this problem, but obviously that's not quite the case. So what I'm going to do is just very simply flip over the table and glue down a very slender piece of wood across the center of the glass. This should completely solve the problem, however just be sure I'm going to drop in two more pieces. Bloop! Solid as a rock. Now on to the powerhouse of the air hockey table, aka the fan. The fan that I'm going to use is a cheap Walmart fan that's rated for about 5 or 6 volts. And all we really need from this fan is the fan itself and the back plate, so after we unscrew that we can throw the rest away. I'm now going to cut out a piece of MDF that's just large enough to fit in the bottom cavity of the air hockey table, then cut a hole out of the center of it large enough for us to be able to bolt on our fan. Like this. Now we can go ahead and screw it in place. 
Perfect. Now we could very easily run this fan off a couple double A's and that would be awesome because they would be portable. But since I hate swapping out dead batteries, I'm just going to hook up this fan to a 9 volt wall adapter making sure to put a power switch in between them. There we go. I already took the liberty of hot gluing down the wire so now we can plug it in and make sure everything works. Wonderful. While we have this upside down, I'm going to go ahead and screw in four of these rubber coated metal hooks into each corner to serve as legs. Not necessarily what they're intended for, but they'll work. With that, there's only one thing left to do and then the table itself will be complete. As the table sits in its current state, if you hit the puck hard enough into either goal, it'll just simply fly straight out. So what I'm going to do to stop that is just simply take a small hinge and a piece of Lexan and hinge the Lexan over both holes just like that now whenever you hit a puck the lex sand will stop it from flying out but whenever you want to get the puck again all you have to do is open up the door with that the table itself is complete and we can move on to the puck and hitters for the hitters all i'm going to do is glue on a half inch pvc cap onto the center of a poker chip because i'm such an avid gambler then spray paint it red look how tiny these things are for the actual puck itself, all I'm going to do is take this thin red plastic plate that I picked up at Walmart four for a dollar and cut a poker chip sized piece out of the center of it. Just like this. This is both incredibly durable and very thin, which means it'll hover well. With that, everything is complete and it is now finally time to test it. This is both extremely fun yet very difficult to play. As you can see, there's very limited space that your hitter can occupy, but it just adds to the intensity. And there you have it, how to build a mini air hockey table. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe.